Guys, welcome to game two between Jayun and Whip, upper right hand corner. Jayun starting as the pink Protoss, bottom left hand corner. We have Whip starting as the teal Terran, game one. Jayun doing a good job of creating a lot of early havoc, but Whip recovering nicely. And honestly, I feel like it was more Jayun getting greedy, wanting to plop down a lot of expansions and just not having sufficient defense as far as a follow up. I'm going to again give the announcement that, so it's, I got three more games after this, then I am out of stuff to upload to YouTube for some time unless somebody's providing replays magically in the background. Uh, waiting for BSL in January, otherwise it'll just be kind of, I don't know, fun stuff in the background, so a reminder with that. But let me talk about this finals match. Jayun versus Whip. So game one, I feel like is an indicator of what I was talking about, where Jayun, he plays really, really well against, I'll just say it, like the Artosis style Protoss, or not Protoss, it's Artosis style Terran, that is more shelling up and looking for the plus one weapons, plus, you know, or a uh, timing attack, or the plus two, plus one armor timing attack, or someone who'll just let him sit back and macro. Whip is not that guy. But this is on Eclipse. It tends to be one of those maps that favors Protoss. Well, I'll say that it favors Protoss. Basically, Terran have to oftentimes deal just heads up with a gas deal no matter what. So we'll see how that plays out. So looks like he is moving out to potentially get a gas deal. Barracks is plopping down. So Probe will have a shot at it. But keep in mind what happened in game one. So we'll see if Jaewoon has a follow-up for the gas deal, or if he, well, hopefully he doesn't flub it again. So currently, does manage to get the gas deal before Whip is able to cap his gas. So that's, that's, always, that's almost expected, though, on Eclipse. Whip almost managed to cap it. But let's see if he goes, yeah, we just one racks into expand. Needs to get the scouting information first. It looks like Jayun. <laughs> this is actually going to play out for Whip because Jayun was going for the gas deal and was actually going to go gas deal into 14 Nexus rather than 12 Nexus. But Whip should be able to spot that. But the la one thing is the lack of gas does make it harder to stop these style of builds because you have to rely on just barracks or things like that. That's not to say it's impossible. But I'm curious if Whip will turn around with some sort of double barracks or if he's just going to try to plop down his own command center in response. Probe doing some nice harassment, so he's walked in, he's confirmed. Okay, that's a Nexus first build. Initial Marines out, and I'm what, so now escorted that probe out. Now the decision is, okay, looks like he is going to draw back, start working on that assimilator. And we do see those minerals starting to cycle up rather than additional barracks being plopped down. So I think Whip is just opting to go for the natural expansion instead. Yeah, surfacing the resources to do so. So this is gonna be, so plays more towards Jayun's favor with the more mid game macro style, which I think he's much more comfortable in. Once he gets that macro sailing and get at least a control group of troops, he tends to play very, very well. Simulator online looks like he's gonna go for a forge opener rather than double gate opener to follow this up. And SCV will be escorted out, just barely escaping that very... Well, does he escape? Photon cannon being dropped. I think that SCV almost... Could have gotten hunted for a kill. Four Marines finishing off that assimilator. Refinery up. Command Center also being built. Cannon will be plenty to deal with the Marines. And now, yeah. That's what I was looking for. Sliver of health left. Cybernetic core being dropped. But the Marines streaming across, that's five Marines. SCV alongside. Now keep in mind a bunker is not a likely scenario, but five Marines can strike a cannon. That might force a probe. SCV actually, is Whip gonna double expand behind this? This could be, I like this play. If that is what he is, or is he just gonna try to sneak a factory here at the nine o'clock location? If he just keeps these Marines staggered out here across the front, rather than committing them to this cannon, what he can do is he can block additional scouting. And blocking the additional scouting, yeah, he can double expand. That is a clever play that I have not seen other Terran. This is very risky, but knowing Jayun's preferred style of play and knowing that he opened up with a 14 Nexus and he's going to have to play more defensively, I love this play from Whip. So move the Marines up, blockaded back scouting information, and now Jayun in the dark. And this is a very rare thing for Terran to do. So rather than playing just straight up aggressively, going to go for the economic aggression with the quick third command center. I love whip style of play oftentimes. Still, Jay, I want Jayun to... I, I'm going to give the straight up bias. Jayun's a friend of mine, so I want him to win this. 
So he's the guy I'm rooting for behind this. But I, I got to admit, I love this style of play from Whip. Pulling out the creativity and taking the risks. So, Barracks on the front. Jayun moving out with his initial Dragoon. Is cycling that range. Second gateway after the robotics coming online. Let's see if he... I assume he's not going to go for any sort of DT drop again. Might just open up with Observer. And then go for the third. Do the Dragoon spot the... Okay, this is going to be close. Dragoon does not spot the SCVs in transfer. Nope, does spot him. But now, can he do anything about it? So walking up to the 9 o'clock location, there's a bunker on location. And that Dragoon going to get pushed back, and that's got to... Now Jayun has got to puzzle out what he's going to do in response. Dropping a Stargate, I guess he just wants to go... <coughs> Interesting. So he's going to go uh, Robo Shuttle, also dropping a Stargate behind this, so grabbing all the tech, knowing that with Whip going for three base, he's got to play on the defense and is lighter on troops. Armory coming online there. we got six Marines at two locations with both bunkers, and it looks like Jayun just going to grab... No, never mind. So he's going to grab a Stargate, going to grab Shuttle Speed and a Reaver, knowing that he needs to slow Whip his economy down. And try to grab his third. This is kind of what I was talking about. Jane plays very greedy as Protoss. Very, very greedy. First tank out on the front to deal with those Dragoons. Actually, this bunker placement is kind of clever, I think. The Siege Shank needs to be very, very careful making its way up. The shuttle... Is this just going to be an elevator Dragoon attack? Okay, so the shuttle right there being pushed back by the turrets. And the Dragoons attacking the barracks on the low ground. Siege Shank being upgraded. No second... Okay, there is a second Siege Shank out. So should be able to repel this attack shortly. But only four Dragoons out for Jayun total. There's the Reaver. It's going to have to come back to scoop that up. But keep in mind, right now, Whip's worker count pretty solid. He's sitting on three base, three gas. He doesn't have to sit on this two factory count. He can actually just... As long as he's holding these attacks back, which it looks like he currently is, he can flood factories almost immediately. Let's see if he opts to do so. Looks like plus one weapons. Already cycling. Is he just going to make his way? I'm kind of curious if he's just going to sit back on these two factories and try to play it. Jane, wow. So Jane's play here is, is get a Reaver, use that to push any attack back, and maybe even counter this with his own double expand. So we got a probe hiding at the twelve or at the eleven o'clock, eleven o'clock, and at the three o'clock, maybe to deal with counter drops potentially. He's going to saturate his third, but maybe immediately going to grab. Yet another base. In the meantime, Whip. What I'm a little concerned about with Whip is he's saturated across these bases, but has not tacked on commensurate factories to really make those minerals count. He's continuing to build siege tanks, but I'm looking for a pause in production to basically ramp up to make that those three bases work for him. And instead, Jayun, look at this. So ignore the, the base take. So he's just planting pylons there to, to be wary. And instead, immediately tech switching to carriers. Saying, okay, Whip, you're going to play on the defense. I'm just going to... Uh, I'm just going to go straight to late game. That's what's going to happen here. So got he has shuttle speed. He's got the Reavers to hold back any sort of push that might have been coming. Still might be able to get some economic disruption, although there's a lot of turrets there to the north of Siege Tank. In the black uh, in the back lines looked like whip dropped the comp set does see the carrier tech switch let's see if he drops honestly he could go up to uh the full eight factories at this stage i'm wondering if he's going to is going to have that weapons upgrade advantage getting the charm booster upgrade immediately kind of a skeleton crew on both sides jayun actually has that supply lead but keep in mind where you really want to be as a protoss player but keep in mind a lot of that is in carriers that are not yet on the field the dragoon actually pushing ooh, suicide dragoon I think maybe wanting to see the saturation, that natural expansion. Actually might have seen that starport. There's the additional... So, well, okay. So this is going to be a 5-6 count. And I really wanted to see like a 7 or 8 count. Thank you for the raid, Black Man, by the way. Amazing player. Everybody go follow him out there. So engineering bay... So just a slew of turrets there for whip. He's going to need to produce Goliath in a hurry. But here's the crazy thing, is, is he's not going to have to worry about a huge ground force to support. So he's already filling in those Goliaths. He is going to have plus one weapons. 
because of just the the little, the few amount of units that are on the ground for Jayun, I don't know that he's going to have all that much trouble with his carrier fleet. Simply because there's going to have all these Goliaths. They have the Charon uh, booster upgrade finishing just now. He's got plus one weapons. Goliaths have a lot of trouble versus carriers when there's the Zealots and Dragoons mixing up with them underneath. But right now, as far as the full Dragoon count, it is six. With a little bit of Reaver support, Jayun grabbing his fourth base bottom right. Now we do have the factory flood behind this and an army of Goliaths. And honestly, these Goliath, the full control group heads up is probably sufficient to deal with everything on the ground and in the air for Whip. But we'll see how it pays off. This The supply count tells a different story. Again, though, keep in mind that supply count is in... Uh, portion, large portions of that supply count are in the carriers. I'm not sure I like carriers as much on Eclipse in particular because it just feels like there's just a lot of open territory for the Goliaths to just chase them down and wipe them out as well. But it looks like Jayun... I assume as soon as he sees any movements towards the front, he just wants to go for a diving attack with these shuttles into the natural expansion to try to force... Troop, uh, the attack troops back. So now moving out, the Goliaths do have plus one weapons, pushing things back, looking for any sort of movements. Are those shuttles going to draw back and join the attack forces? The next uh, question. Observer keeping an eye, and whip slowly moving out. But again, this is a formidable, absolutely formidable ground army. And Jayun, upon seeing this, not missing a beat, is staging up to go ahead and. He hasn't even saturated the, the base bottom right, but already moving out to potentially grab the base at the 11 o'clock location. Just to go for an absolute macro race. So additional commands that are being built for Whip. Whip within 11 supply, so in a pretty good position, but has not made any aggression. So it looks like he just wants to sit back for the time being. Dropping that additional comps at. Finding nothing. So looks like that probe able to get out of dodge. But Jayun now saturating that bottom right-hand base. That will put him a, a base ahead before this command center lands and starts mining. He's going to have a sizable carrier fleet to press out. Whip has even supply. This is kind of the, the moment where he needs to move out and make something happen or, or potentially end up behind as it moves to late game. Jayun, yeah, setting, staging up territory everywhere, dropping a cannon leaving me guessing as far as where he might try to grab an additional base. Pylons all over the map. This Marine fleeing from a Zealot. The Carrier is finally moving out. Whip holding strong, though. Maybe just want to, wants to hit the 200-200 uh, mark and get that plus two weapons before he makes maneuvers. I'm wondering if another armory's out or if it's just been the same. One thing I want to point out is I think this is only a single armory out for Whip. So only going for a single armory build. Now the dive into the natural expansion. Both shuttles getting completely crushed though. So that bye bye reavers. So whip not being pulled back or dissuaded at all. And is going to be able to just march forward across mid map. The carrier is looking to engage. But again, this is kind of the problem I was worried about earlier where Jayun just doesn't have the raw bulk to deal with whip's troops. So the Goliaths Proceeding forward, Vulture is laying mines and mixing it up with the Zealots in between. And the Carrier is losing a lot of interceptors and taking some base fire. And Whip can just slow push this straight up. And I don't think Jayun can stop it. Or, uh, yeah, Jayun just doesn't have enough to really stop him. Plus two weapons online. Goliath just getting peeled apart. Unupgraded Dragoons as well. Some High Templar moving in, maybe to provide some Psy Storm, but they are just now... Looks like they've got a Psy Storm apiece, and so basically these need to be three Miracle Storms for Jayun. Another one on the low ground. Kind of here, but one of them getting taken out before it's even able to drop a Storm. And this is my concern with Carriers on Eclipse, is they just don't have a massive amount of space to flee to in order to do kind of that macro in mid-space to be as effective as they would be on other maps. So the Goliaths still holding strong, pressing into that carrier fleet. One of them going to get taken out. More High Templar moving up. There's a little bit of energy maybe to get some more Psy Storm out, but Jayun's army is looking thin. 
and that natural expansion is just about to get sealed in. Undissuaded, he's going to go ahead and expand to the bottom right, but Whip is now sealing that natural expansion, which means, and I don't see any additional, there are no gateways or anything else anywhere out on the map, so Jane's got to rebuild in a hurry. Whip has a lot attacking his own simulator to go ahead and get the uh, interceptors out. Does have plus two weapons on the interceptor, which helps. But Whip, Siege Tank's already underneath. I don't think these carriers can take out these Siege Tanks fast enough to save his natural expansion Nexus, let alone his main. Morgoliath there, big piles starting to move out. Jayun has additional bases, but all of his production is in his main. The only thing that can sneak out are the carriers. And the Siege Tanks continuing to march forward. Soon they're going to be able to shell that natural expansion and the gateways as units are being produced. Six carriers still out. Zealot's trying to march down, at least create some havoc with that AI, able to do so. But the carriers taking some base damage and more Goliaths continue to stream out for whip. Whip has secured that nine o'clock location. It looks like he's also gonna sneak that upper left. It looks like he managed to get some additional damage done there. But right now, Whip. Wow, empty side storm for Jayun. You can just see kind of the the panic at this day, dropping a side storm on his Nexus, which is uncharacteristic of him. Has managed to whittle things down on the front, but there's another pile of reinforcements moving in shortly. Might be able to swing things open. Whip right now a little bit gas starved. Has an immense amount of minerals in the bank. But yeah, needs to get that gas flowing. So Jayun actually able to push this back. He is empty on his bank as far as production. Somehow has a 10 supply lead still. Let's see how long that holds though. As more carriers falling in open field. So now it's turning into a macro battle. Can Whip sustain? And can Jayun hold on and use what few carriers are, he has to push the turrets and the Goliaths back without expending too much of his air fleet? And it looks like the answer is, is he is able to push Whip back and stay alive in this match. Whip expanding the upper left in the meantime, a little bit out of position. So now Jayun's very brave taking of the five o'clock base looks genius as he's able to not only get that, but hold. It looks like Whip peeling some troops off, leaving the Goliaths behind, picking off carriers as they're not escorted with ground troops, but moving the siege tanks to go ahead, go ahead and attack from the low ground at the four o'clock location, gonna siege up. Some Goliaths and High Templar are making a beeline there to go ahead and defend the siege. One siege tank making it through, it's gonna get taken care of by that cannon. So now Whip down 28 supplies. Size Storm blanketing the siege tanks, able to wipe them out. And the Dragoon's gonna be able to clear what's left. So now Whip all of a sudden, and this is where, well, we'll see how it plays out. Level three weapons, no armor upgrades as of yet. We've got still eight factories behind this. We'll see if uh, the count increases. Whip is sealing that upper left-hand corner and still on, still being the aggressor, moving these Goliaths across the field. Three carriers left. Some more probes making the bottom right. Jayun's main mind out is natural expansion somewhat thin. Same case for Whip, although that natural expansion looks like it's still got a few resources left in it, potentially because of that earlier grab of that third. Vultures streaming across, want to close off that 11 o'clock base. The Vulture's actually streaming through. And you can see Whip trying to reinforce. He wants to make sure that upper left-hand base stays up and running. Some Vultures actually streaming all the way across, going to get some Vulture kills here at the natural. So Jayun diving in attack force, just walking to the upper left. We do have an army there which is mostly Goliaths to potentially deal with this. The carrier's there as well. This could be a big turning point in the battle if Jayun can wipe this base out. Another carrier getting knocked out. But we got 10 Dragoons, a Zealot left to do it. But these are level three weapon upgraded Dragoons and that Siege Tank's being untouched underneath. Absolutely splatting a Dragoon with every single shot. Some SCVs being wiped out. Carriers rejoining this fray. But more reinforcements making their way for Jayun. It's a closer reinforcement point. More reinforcements also making their way up for Whip. And the Dragoon's actually backing out, so Jayun not able to wipe out the base. Huge amount of Goliaths here. 
So these four carriers need to be wary. Some Dark Templar are mixing it up to try to abuse the lack of science vessels that are out there for whip. Supply count still, well, Jane about 10 ahead. He's running on three bases versus what will soon be three that in theory puts him behind, but that upper left-hand base is not fully saturated. Whip re-engaging midfield, a single Dark Templar spotting that army. A little bit scattered, more combat dropping to wipe out those Dark Templar and Jayun trying to reposition to potentially cut off reinforcements. I don't... So he's positioning as though he's going to go ahead and grab that 11 o'clock. feel like that would be a huge risk. This base is looking very thin. So we got the 12 o'clock, 11 o'clock. Jayun's going to try to take that 11 o'clock. The SCV is actually pulling out. Sorry, DTs are wiping out everything there. Missed that. So the DT following uh, follow-up, buying some breathing room for Jayun. Large amount of Goliaths walking up here. There is a Comsat station on point. Not the energy. That would be that would it would have felt more appropriate if that was the one expending the energy. Jayun once again grouping up has a huge worker lead all of a sudden. Maybe a little bit oversaturated at 83. Running on four bases versus Whip's two. So Whip needs to reestablish this location. Wiping out those carriers will definitely help. Dark Templar creating chaos in the midst of this. The Dragoons working on that command center. It looks like they are going to be able to wipe it out. That's going to slow Whip Whip's economy down greatly. Dropping all sorts of Sidestorm along the Goliaths otherwise. So once again, it is a Goliath fight in the upper left-hand corner. And a straight-up macro battle head-to-head. -head. More Psystorm being dropped. And the Siege going to get wiped out. Whip realizing how important this base is. Distance mining and Jayun now turning the tide. Whip falling behind in supplies. Some vultures diving out to go ahead and attack what they can. Maybe create some distraction, but Whip losing control of the upper left-hand corner. More siege tanks want to... So, looks like Whip wants to try to go for two-pronged attacks. Harass the 11 o'clock and the 12 o'clock while moving in siege tanks to engage at the 6 and 5 using mines to cut off reinforcements in between. And maybe that'll buy some time for Whip to go ahead and grab additional expansions. Some Zealots able to sneak through. But it looks like that 6 o'clock base is being cracked open. Some Zealots eating some mines as they're making their way across. So Whip not giving up yet. Trying to make a show of it. Distance mining upper left-hand corner. The Zealots not sufficient. June regathering those attack forces. And now a lot of reinforcements look like they're starting to position maybe to engage the six o'clock, but Whip able to get into the base, at least disrupt some mining here, maybe wipe some units out. The Goliaths once again able to get heads up attacks on the carriers as they're reinforcing this attack, forcing the rest of Jayun's attack force back. And that's buying time for this vulture to do work. Already has five kills. Although this might be doing Jayun a favor as it's freeing up supply. Over what may be too many workers here in the late game. More Psystorm being dropped. We're trying to make the best of a bad situation. Down 30 supply. Still has plus three weapons upgrade, which is very, I mean, just makes that metal hit hard. Rebuilding that command center upper left-hand corner. And it looks like he's just going to try to allow his offense to be his defense at this stage. Because I don't know that he can defend upper left, but has emptied this vulture. What a hero. 15 kills. 15 kills on that vulture. Completely emptying out the 5 o'clock location. And Whip turning right back around, trying to push things back across. June has more supply. But doesn't have it in a concentrated area. It looks like a DT is able to get into that upper left, pause that construction, able to kill some more SCVs. Another DT also mixing it up with the Goliaths. Everything making a beeline to the 11 o'clock base. 
to get some damage done there. Taking a brief pause to wipe a carrier out. But now the Dragoons and Zealots are in between. Going to be able to wipe out some Siege Shanks and chase that army back. Whip being pushed back into the 3 o'clock location. And things are looking dire now for Whip. Managed, yeah, actually still isn't constructed. That upper left has been distance mining from the 9 o'clock. Is essentially on one and a half bases here. While Jane's running on three. Jane making his way to 200 supply. Huge amounts of Goliaths starting to walk. They need to actually get to that upper left immediately because Jane looks like he wants to levy another attack that direction. And right now there's only two Goliaths to help defend. More Goliaths making their way up. Dragoon's there as well. The Zealot's also there to mix things up. So we're going to push those Goliaths back and wipe out the turret. A lot of latent defense. Some SCVs under fire, and that command center looks like it get, might, might get wiped out as well. Ghost centering the fray. Dropping a lock down there. Whip trying to make the most of small resources. The second carrier getting locked down. So three carriers left. I don't know that Whip has enough to press through the Dragoons and three carriers remaining, however. Whip's resources looking very, very low. Doesn't look like he can defend that 9 o'clock. Certainly can't retake the upper left, and that is probably going to be GG here. As Jayun still mining on three bases. And despite the lockdown, has a standing army. Whip needs a miracle right here as he's down twice the supply. Regathering what he has, Jayun exiting, looking to mirror that army. Currently has a much huge supply gap, 80 supply approximately. Starting to attack mid-map. And Psystorm blanketing everything at the 9 o'clock. Not a, This is the last Goliath we're seeing on the field. This is certainly going to be GG for Whip. As losing his last mining base... So Jayun, after dropping game one, coming back with strength in game two to even the series. Whip GG's. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.